If you're in the market to replace your boiler, you are probably running into a variety of opinions when it comes to the type of equipment that's best for your specific situation. So in this video, we're going to talk about two of the most common options that are presented, and that is a cast iron boiler versus a high efficiency modulating boiler. And at the end of this video, there'll be a link to another video about one of our favorite modulating boilers, as well as another video about some of the boiler installation best practices that we recommend. And the boiler installation best practice video is actually in the process of being edited at the moment. So if it's not showing up at the end of this video, just check back in a week or so because that video will be out shortly or subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and you'll receive a notification when that comes out. So when it comes to picking out the best boiler for your home, some of the considerations we'll talk about in this video are the specific use cases for each type of boiler and which ones we prefer. Because the truth is there's not a one size fits all solution. So we'll touch on some of the trade-offs between reliability and efficiency, as well as your hot water heating because if you're upgrading your boiler, you could potentially opt for an indirect fired water heater, but it's not always the best upgrade and really depends on your use case. And in addition, we will talk to you about your home's existing infrastructure because depending on whether or not you have baseboards or radiators or in radiant floors, that will also affect our recommendation as well. So first off, let's talk about what the difference is between a high efficiency modulating boiler and a cast iron boiler is. Now the term cast iron boiler refers to the type of heat exchanger that the system has. Cast iron boilers run at an average efficiency of about 83%, whereas a modulating boiler typically runs at 95 to 99% efficiency. And if you're not sure what that means, don't worry, I'll explain how percentage of efficiencies are calculated and what that number means here shortly. But the bottom line is that just because something is more efficient doesn't necessarily mean it's better. It just means that it consumes less energy to produce a given amount of heat. And I go over this more in depth in another video, but I will still touch on how this is achieved in this video so you understand the concept and therefore the caveat that comes with a high efficiency boiler. Now, 83% efficiency means that 83% of the heat from the fuel burned stays in the home and 17% of the heat goes out the exhaust, which in this case, the fuel used is going to be natural gas or propane. A modulating boiler, on the other hand, keeps more of the heat in the home, so only one to 5% of the heat energy from the combustion process is lost out of the exhaust compared to 17 to 20% with a cast iron boiler. Now, the way that this efficiency is achieved is by condensing the exhaust, which is why a high efficiency furnace and boiler, they are called condensing gas boilers, because instead of sending extremely hot exhaust air outside through the exhaust and therefore wasting energy like you would in a traditional 80% system, a condensing gas furnace or boiler pulls as much heat out of the exhaust as possible, which produces two results. Number one, it's maximizing the amount of heat that stays in the home and therefore the efficiency of the appliance. And number two is that it produces produces condensation as a byproduct. And as a result, a condensing boiler requires the installation of a PVC exhaust in lieu of a metal exhaust like you have with a traditional cast iron boiler. Now, although modulating boilers are more efficient, which means they will use less fuel to heat your home, the truth is that cast iron boilers are typically regarded as the most reliable and longest lasting type of boiler. It's for this reason that if someone does not have a need to maximize efficiency, which we will talk about some of those needs in a second, we will typically steer them in the direction of a cast iron boiler because although we make more money repairing systems that break often, we still prefer to put in equipment that is reliable for our customers because less headaches for our customers means less headaches for us. Now, I don't want to give you the wrong impression and scare you off from getting a high efficiency modulating boiler. And for what it's worth, that's what I have installed at my house. And it's been very reliable the whole time that I've had it for these past couple of years. But that decision was made because the efficiency factor for our situation would have saved us a substantial amount of money on a monthly basis. And to be quite frank, installing a high efficiency PVC exhaust was actually easier than trying to figure out how to run a metal chimney from our mechanical room in the crawl space. But that doesn't change the fact that cast iron systems are very reliable and built to last. The new cast iron boilers will typically have a life expectancy of about 30 years, but we've pulled out boilers that have been over 100 years old before they finally gave out. And if you're wondering whether or not the cost savings is there, an easy way to guess what you're saving savings is going to be is by looking at what percentage of your utility bill is spent on gas during the heating months and water heating during your non-heating months because you can only save money by comparison with what you're currently spending. And in my opinion, a modulating boiler will typically save you about 20% compared to your current consumption. Now that is not 20% of your bill, but 20% of your bill as it relates to what you're actually paying for gas. So look at your bill closely because there's oftentimes a connection fee in addition to tax 
taxes, those are gonna exist even if you use no gas for the month. So if your heating bill, for example, is $500 a month, then it probably makes sense to consider a high efficiency modulating boiler because you could potentially be saving $100 a month, give or take in that scenario. And if you have a six month heating season, meaning you live someplace where it's very cold, the savings will add up in a relatively quickly time frame, assuming that you are planning on living in the house for a long enough period of time to recoup that cost. Now, that being said, if this happens to be a rental property and you are in a position to put in a cast iron boiler, meaning that that's what's in there currently and that's the type of exhaust setup that you have, then there is absolutely nothing wrong with sticking with the cast iron boiler because this is going to be more reliable for your tenants, which means less headache for you. Now let's talk about the types of radiators and baseboards you have in your home, or perhaps you don't even have baseboards and you just have radiant heated floors. The fact of the matter is that either of these boiler options will work with a variety of baseboards or even with a forced air hydronic fan coil, for example, because all you have to do is adjust the set point of the temperature of the water and how the system is piped in order to maintain the boiler temperatures at the proper settings for either a baseboard or a radiant flooring setup. Radiant floors have a maximum temperature of 130 degrees, which means that although your primary loop will be much hotter than this, running at around 180 degrees, with the combination of a properly piped secondary loop or loops and a mixing valve, you'll be able to make sure that the temperature going through your floors does not exceed this target. And if you have baseboards, those typically run at 180 degrees as well. So the temperature that your boiler is running at will typically match that of the temperature that's going to your baseboards. Now, one of the benefits of a modulating combi boiler, combi being short for combination, is that it is also a built-in tankless water heater. So it does both space heating to heat your home and your domestic hot water heating for showers and hot water, etc., which replaces the need for having a separate water heater. Now, this definitely leads to an increase in efficiency, but this does lead to one downside, which is that if your combi boiler goes out, that means not only do you not have space heating, but you also don't have hot water. Now, these are typically reliable. So the bigger use case that we look at is one, how expensive are your bills and will there be a cost savings? And number two, how long do you plan on staying in the home? Because if you plan on staying in the home for a long time, the cost savings will add up over time, making it worthwhile. And worrying about the boiler potentially breaking down in the middle of a storm 10 years from now is really not the biggest concern because most companies like us work around the clock when it's cold out and one night without hot water 10 years from now, but having 10 years of reliable hot water is pretty good in my book. And like I mentioned earlier, this is the type of system I have in my house for what it's worth. Now, another efficiency consideration that I'll touch on briefly is whether your home is on propane versus natural gas because oftentimes propane can double or triple the price of natural gas by comparison in terms of what it costs to heat your home. So if you are on propane, oftentimes it will make sense to get a high efficiency or combi boiler system just for this reason alone. But if you happen to be leaning towards a cast iron boiler because this is what you have currently and you like the idea of having the most reliable equipment possible, even though you will be sacrificing a little bit of efficiency, there's still a way that you can utilize your boiler for hot water heating and it's through a type of hot water heater called an indirect fired water heater also referred to as a sidearm now the way that a sidearm or indirect fired water heater works is that hot water from the boiler circulates through a coil tube that is inside the water heater tank the benefits of this type of setup is that you have a very quick recovery time because you have the full btu capacity of your boiler heating up your hot water which means you can completely heat that tank typically in about 20 minutes and you will rarely run out of hot water because they have such a quick recovery time when compared to a traditional natural draft water heater. And this is a pretty in-depth topic, so I don't have time to cover all of it in this video. But if you found this content helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. It's a great way you can support the channel and helps us out a lot and is much appreciated. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service like Denver Metro or Colorado Springs, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free we come out for free for all first time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's a link actually in the description below where you can schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up-to-date list of the cities and states that we service. So you can stay up to date 
when we start servicing your Metro. And shortly, there will be a link to other videos that I referenced at the beginning popping up on the screen. So check those out if you haven't done so already. And hopefully you found this content helpful and let us know what you think by posting a comment in the comment section below. What type of system are you leaning towards putting in to your home and what types of experiences have you had with either types of these systems? Do you have a cast iron now? Do you have a high efficiency now? What's your opinion? And if you still have questions, we do read those comments. So feel free to post a question in the comment section below and we'll see if we can put out a video that answers that question for you or respond to you directly in the comments.